All right, so starting on the Star Orbiter. And it's so. All right, so I opened up the package and I took everything out. So here are the tubes, coupling, the bottom half of the body tube, motor retainer. These are the tube rail guides. I'm gonna replace those with these. These I got these from Apogee Components. <clears throat> and then these are the center rings that are cardboard. I am going to replace with these wooded ones also from Apogee Components. So uh, it's a really good company. You'll look into them if you want to build something. <clears throat> also, the parachute I'm gonna replace with this uh it's it's off a kite so i'm using this it's a streamer i'm gonna put on there and then these are the uh the fins so i'm gonna cover these up and i'll show you here a little bit how i do that you can see where i did some dimensions um i put this into my uh program that i have um rock sims to try to get um flight simulations and and um weight you know, your center of gravity and your center of pressure. So in this rocket, um, this is the motor tube. It's not your typical Estes small tube. Um, it's a 21, 29 millimeter, but it's also long and there's no uh, bulkhead in there to um, to stop the, the motor tubes because um, it's either gonna have this motor with this retention, see the lip, or this H motor. And you see the lip right there. So, and that's why I said on an early video that I wanted to put a baby H in it or, or fly an F motor in it. So I'm going to use this. And then S has, has this retainer ring. So I think it'll be pretty cool. Okay, so on the body tube, I've already marked it. So half inch, four and a half, and a seven and a half. <clears throat> I've already sanded it also. And then I sanded the uh, wood rings that I'm going to put on. And then I kind of mock fit everything up to see how everything lines up um, I also sanded the coupler so I'm gonna go ahead and glue on these the rings and um, I'm gonna I always do uh, these guys at the end so I'll just put these aside so let me go ahead and go do that and we'll continue okay so the uh, the rings are glued on um, this time around I use wood glue and it's a uh, Elmer's Wood Glue Max. Um, I typically use it on my smaller rockets, but since this is kind of a smaller rocket, even though I'm using an H motor and maybe an F, so it'll be a little bit weaker. But I wanted to use wood glue. Um, I typically use the JB Welds there, but I, like I said, I wanted to try something different. And um, wood glue is a little bit cheaper. And just to see, you know. I might not even get this guy back. Um, I have a feeling he might just go up too high and then just drift off with the wind. But anyways, so let's uh, continue and and uh, I'll start doing the coupling and then I'll glue the um, the skins on the fins. All right. While the motor tube is drying a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the coupling. So I've measured the middle it's an inch and a half it's a three inch coupling and i've already sanded it and i have also sanded the inside of the body tubes <clears throat> now in the instructions it, it does do it towards the end but um i mean i'm gonna join the tube and then i'm gonna connect the streamer at the top and then put the uh, the motor tube at the bottom so i can go ahead and do that now it doesn't uh, i'm kind of not doing the directions but it's it's uh, so lesson learned, as you can see here, um, this side I used the wood glue and then this side here I used the <clears throat> Elmer's glue and the wood glue just, it's so thick and uh, the coupling is kind of long, I know, typically I use like two inch couplings and the coupling just seized so I know I got a little gap here, um, the gap's not too bad, well, I'll just have to go back and fill it in so now my rockets I guess three eighths of an inch longer now, but it's okay. You know, 
now I know not to use wood glue for coupling and just stick with the uh, good old Elmer's regular glue so but also the coupling just got to be careful with them and then they they do seize up and I couldn't get it to move anymore if I did if I tried it let me see if I can show you it started to kind of mess with the two when I was trying to force it but anyways hey it's just a little model so nothing fancy we're not going to space Okay, so for the fins, I've taken them off the sheet that they were cut in. I'm going to sand them both sides, kind of smooth them out a little bit. And then I'm going to try the technique um, that Tim did on uh, Apogee Components. He, um, he covered his fins with a sheet of paper and glue instead of, because I was thinking about doing a fiberglass over these. To keep them from shredding apart with the uh, G-Force. But uh, I'm going to try that because he did it on his. On a rocket called Aspire. That thing he sells on his website. But uh, So I'll, I'll try that and see if it's simpler. I don't want to spend too much money or too much time on this rocket. Since it's just a quick build. And um, it's also the quick, you know, my first video for you guys to watch. But uh, let me go ahead and start sanding these. And I'll get the uh, paper on here. And we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so I have glued on the paper onto the wood fins now thing to note is that um, when you put the wood or the glue I'm sorry on the fins you got to make sure it's really thin because if it's too wet your fins will start warping on you and that's why I have this box you know, that's weighted down to uh, kind of compress them down a little bit to keep them from warping on me um, but if you notice this all this box is also uh, a water rocket that I bought for my nephew and uh, we had a couple of rockets that we were shooting here in the backyard and one of them I pressurized to like 60 60 psi and it went over to the neighbor's yard or to the field behind my house and we never saw that rocket again but I still have the launcher and um, maybe when it gets hot again we'll launch some more my nephew really liked it you know, he's really into it so that's why I bought it and I also got this at uh, Apogee Components but I think you can find other ones or you can build some yourself but anyways, so while that's drying down there, I'm going to go ahead and work on, not the parachute, but uh, I'm going to work on the streamer. And I'm going to make the uh, string for it. And I'm going to use these uh, fishing hooks. So I'll work on that and I'll give you an update, alright? Alright, so what I plan on doing is um, using this mylar. Um, it was a tail off a kite that I took off. It's two inches wide and it's roughly I would say about eight to ten feet long. I really didn't measure it. I just kind of cut it <clears throat> but what I plan on doing is um, Using using some duct tape and I'm going to uh, just tape the edge and then I'm gonna run my stringer Which my stringer I'm gonna use I'm gonna use 50 pound braided Spider wire and um, I use this on my homemade parachutes that I've been kind of playing around with, with spill holes. Um, because uh, some of the S-Test parachutes, they kind of start ripping on you. So I use like heavy duty trash bag. I think it's like, I don't know how many mils they are thick. But I made um, 18 inch diameter to I think even all the way to 24 inch diameter parachutes. And then I made a massive spill holes and I've been testing different ones. To see how fast the uh, rocket comes back down. So just little experiments that I like to do while I'm launching them. Not just launching them, but I've kind of like to, you know, see how other things work and experiment with different things. But uh, yeah, so let me, um, I'll tie this end off and uh, I'll show you here in a bit. Okay, so I made a uh, anchor point for the line, for the, well, I guess the streamer line. And I used this template here, and I basically just put it here, folded it over, glued it, folded it over, and you can kind of see like the the loops that I did to kind of get it flattened out, and uh, hopefully it's kind of thin, so hopefully when it pulls, it doesn't pull it all out. We'll see. The good thing is that it's not a parachute; it's this um, streamer, so I hopefully it doesn't tug on it too hard. And uh, so now I got this line and it's going to go all the way 
to the cone, and then in the middle, um, I have a loop here, and I'll I have an attachment point using the uh, fishing eyes or the swivels. <clears throat> so I'll use that, and I'll put this in the center. Instead of having a third line, I'll just use all in one line. Um, you can see here, I just used a, a piece of duct tape, and that's how I did mine. That's how I used to do my, um, also do my parachutes that I've made. I just use the, uh, the duct tape, and it's got the uh, reinforcement, the grid inside of it, so it, it actually helps really good. It's, it, it works wonders. I've even repaired parachutes with it. Um, none of my nylon, nylon parachutes, but my plastic ones I fixed. So there's that, there's that. Um, while everything's drying, the, the fins are still drying. So let me wait a little bit more, and then we'll pull everything out. Okay, so I pulled them off the uh, press that I had made up, and then I kind of cut them out a little bit. But um, you see, they're a little rough, and they're still kind of wet, and they still feel kind of cold. So I just kind of wanted to show you, but I, I kind of cut them down a little bit more, and they're not warped like they were earlier. So, But I am going to put them back under the weight to smush them. Some more and then I'll come back and I'll look at them tomorrow but I'll keep this video short <clears throat> and uh, so I have the fins the bodies put together and I got the streamer what else do I need so oh and then the uh, the motor tube is still drying so I just have to attach the fins attach the lanyard and Oh, and then the retainer, the motor retainer. And then I'll look into the uh, rock fins and we'll do some simulation flights. And I'll show you all that too. And then we'll see how it uh, it all goes out. And uh, hopefully I can get this launched this weekend. Oh, and one more thing. So instead of using these again, I'm going to use the rails and they are here. So i got to put these on also. But I'll do those in another video. I'll do like a uh, part two of the build. And uh, just keep this one short. And uh Guys, thanks again for watching. So I think I'm making a lot of racket here in the shed. And I got the the tortoises in here. And Bam Bam was up right now. But I think he stuck his head back in because he saw me down here. No, here he comes. Bam Bam. So I think, I think she or he is wanting to go back to sleep. So I'm going to call it a night. And uh, let them get back to sleep. I know it's cold out, so they shouldn't be moving much. <clears throat> and uh, I'll see you guys later.